Hey, my name's TC Burr. Welcome to Yet, a podcast created to encourage you to get your goal or idea out of your head and into reality. On this podcast, you'll hear stories, encouragements, tips, and ideas to help you write your book, start your business, launch your podcast, or whatever it is you hope to accomplish. Because it's not that you haven't done it, it's just that you haven't done it yet. My guest today is Nathan Mills. Nathan, thank you so much for joining the podcast. How are you doing today, man? Doing great. Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, I am super thankful to have you here. So the way that I typically start things off on this show is I actually ask my guests to kind of do their own intros. And so I could I could say a lot about who you are and what you do, but I always think it's interesting to hear directly from the guests. So if you could just, you know, 30 to 60 seconds, tell people kind of who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I am a professional classical guitarist and my brand online is all about uh, making unique finger style guitar covers arrangements of music from movies, TV, video games. You know, uh, I'm a huge nerd at heart. And so I kind of combined the things that I that I love and that I'm good at and made a business out of it. So have you been playing guitar like your whole life or how long is that as long as that been a part of, of your life? I technically started in eighth grade okay, and didn't get super serious till partway through high school. So as far as like the, the classical guitar world, I was a little bit of a late bloomer, got serious partway through high school and then studied it in college, undergraduate and graduate studies. Okay. So for someone who is maybe not super well-versed in the world of guitar, can you briefly explain what the difference is between like classical guitar and like what I would think of just like, you know, somebody who plays guitar in a band. Yeah, it get I mean, it gets super murky, but just on a, <laughs> on a real basic level, it's all, you know, finger style. So you're, you're plucking with your fingers rather than like strumming chords or things like that. And okay. the idea is that you're essentially a, a one man band. So you're playing okay. like the melody, the chords, everything. It should all be able to just exist on one instrument with just me playing. Okay. And so you, you took your, like you said, you, you took like the movies and the media and the stuff that you were enjoying just in general, your love for playing guitar, classical guitar, and you turned that into a business. How long has your business been in existence? So, uh, YouTube is, has been the primary driver. That's where my business kind of uh, the umbrella, I guess that my, my business lives in. And I posted my first YouTube video I think it was December 2015. So it's been quite a few years. So, yeah, so, we're going to be coming up on the decades soon. That's awesome, man. That's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. So talk about like how... So one of the things that I've really been curious, and I don't actually know this about you, like did you... So it sounds like you started getting really into guitar in, you said, late high school. And then in college, you studied, got, got really um, specific about it. Did you go to school thinking like, I'm going to have a career in music and guitar? Or were you doing some other job and this was kind of like your side thing? And like, talk about the kind of that process, how you got to where you are now, because this is this is like what you do full time, right? Yes. Yeah. So how did you get there? Was it like you knew that was you're going to do right from the start? Or was it kind of a, you know, you, you, you started on the side and then that thing eventually took off? Like, how, how did you get there? So I did. I went to college to study music. So I was a music mm -hmm. major. So the intent, the hope, the dream was that I'd be able to make a, a career out of it. I was not expecting that to look like it does. I was thinking I was going to go a more traditional, safe route, as safe as you can go with a music degree of like teaching. So that's one reason I went on to get my master's. The path, especially in the classical world, is that you would then go on and get your doctorate and then teach at a university. Like that's the that's the big okay. dream. Uh, and so that was like, all right, that's probably what I'll end up doing. But I got super burned out when I finished my master's. And all, I was like, I'm not going to go back for more school. Because even then, those jobs, those university jobs are people get those jobs and they hold on to them until they're 
dead and gone, you know? Yeah. So like yeah. that started to feel less and less realistic. And I wasn't super excited about that in the first place. That was me hedging my bets and just hoping to just make a career in music somehow just because. And so I was burned out and started, I graduated with my master's and started looking for other options. Like, all right, well, maybe music isn't going to work out. What else could I do? Yeah. And uh, I was, I, I'd gotten married so it's also like, I can't just sit around, like mess around. And so I did work. Uh, we, we moved back to Richmond and I got just a job, pay the bills. I was working uh, in collections and did that for a while. And then just started like the, at the time, Vine was a thing. I don't know if you remember oh, Vine, yeah. like six the second short videos. videos. Yeah. 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 And so like the bug started hit me. Like at the time I was barely playing guitar anymore. I was just so burned out. I was like mm. for classical guitar, like one of the weird, like we're weirdos with these long fingernails. Right. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, you know, a curse, a gift and a curse that I live. They make beautiful music, but they just make me look like a weirdo. <laughs> um, and so like I cut an act of rebellion. Like I cut all my fingernails off, oh, wow. like yeah. throwing away this life. But yeah, it started to come back to me. I started getting the itch to play some more. And like Vine, I saw some people making these like just six second covers. It was like just enough, a few notes, like enough to make like some recognizable little hook. So I was like, well, you know, like I love like soundtrack music, you know, for movies and like a lot of that, those themes, like you think Star Wars, bum, 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 bum. Mm, like yeah. all you need is a few seconds and it's recognizable. So I started to kind of make my own versions of stuff there on on vine and just dabbling with that and i don't say my career started then because vine came and went uh and i didn't really do anything else with it um until starting the youtube channel but it, anyway that's kind of what started to lead me i was teaching guitar on the side as well and then you know we can get into this if you want but like uh as far as what made me finally make the plunge to like all right let, let me try this for real and started the youtube channel so yeah, like when I guess I guess and it, and it, for me I'm even interested in like the the mindset shift that happened for you when you when you realized and and what made you realize and decide like okay, this isn't just something, you know, where I'm posting, you know, these little videos on Vine, like no, I'm really going to I'm really going to dig in and make this a thing. Like how did you get to that point and what did that look like? So, yeah, the the big turning point for me was there was a guy, his name's Graham Cochran. He's actually now, he's he's built a brand kind of in the business space. But at the time I met him through our church, he came and like helped my church band. I was playing electric guitar with them at the time when we were rec recording a, an album. And he came and helped us record the album because he, I, I, real, I found out he had this like side gig where it was a blog teaching home recording. Okay. And, you know, I didn't think much of it, just thought it was a little side hustle. And then a couple of years later, I saw him share on Facebook that he was featured on like Business Insider. It was this thing about like the headline was something like how a former musician, you know, makes like 30 grand a month from his blog or something. And I, went, I yeah. was like, what? Yeah. Like, I thought this was like his little side hustle. He was like a worship leader, did this on the side and like, no, like this guy. And so what that did was he was the first person that I knew personally who was doing this, something like online and making yeah. not just a living, but an incredible living from it. And so that kind of flipped a switch to where I was like, oh, like this, this is possible. It's not just a, a thing that you hear of people doing. This is somebody I know who is doing it. So, you know, if he can do it, you know, why not me? Let's why try it. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So a lot of people who are going to listen to this, Nathan, are maybe maybe at the beginning stages of thinking about a business, maybe, or maybe they're, you know, they're writers and they're thinking about writing a book or some some kind of big goal that they maybe thought, you know, I know people do it like in theory, but I could never do it because, you know, I'm I'm full time at this company or, I, you know, maybe my idea is not good enough or whatever. So I'm curious in your journey, like, have you had to deal with any any of those big kind of challenges or fears? And like, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how you how you think about that and how you've navigated that in your in your past and even now. Yeah, uh, there's always imposter syndrome. The more you talk to people who have achieved great things or who are where you want to be, the more you realize like logically, even though you have to like you have to get there, it's hard to to get to that point where you can separate the emotion from it. But logically, 
you hear from them and you can understand like they are just, they're regular people. Yeah. Right. Like there's nothing you know, in, in, in most cases, super inherently special about them that makes what they've done totally unattainable for you. And, and so once you kind of, once you come to terms with that and you stop making excuses for yourself, you realize like, okay, like, it is doable if I'm willing to do what it takes. And that's the big if is that whatever you like to do what they're doing, uh, it's going to take more work. It's going to take longer than you want it to. But that's that's the separating factor. And, and the guitar helped me understand that as well, because, you know, when I play guitar, I've seen my whole journey with the instrument already. And so like people all the time, I hear that story. They're like, man, I wish I could play like you oh, you're so talented. I wish I had musical talent, right? And in my mind, I'm like, no, I'm like, no, I'm not. You know how many years I sucked and struggled with this thing? Like, I just wanted to bash it up against the wall. And like I, auditions where I was literally in tears because I was questioning what I was doing with my life. And so I was able to see that journey like through the guitar to know like, okay, I'm not special. I just didn't stop. I just kept putting in the work uh, and then it it over time grew into something that appears to be exceptional and so the, you know we when i was able to then take that logic into the the business space and say like all right well then why can't i just do that you know career wise as well helps make it like feel possible if you're willing you just got to answer that big if yeah I love that, man. I love that. Like that's, it's so encouraging to hear you say, because it's easy for somebody like me, who's kind of, you know, I'm just getting started with my writing and, and podcasting and all the kind of things that I, I have a lot of big dreams and big ideas of things that I might do, but it's easy for me to look at somebody like you, who's, you know, a decade into it and, and even longer when you think about how long you've been playing guitar and think like, well, yeah, I could never, I could never build what he's built. I could never be as good as him, but like, everybody's on a journey. And, you know, if you compare yourself to somebody who's been been at it for years and years and years, well, yeah, they're, they've probably learned a lot along the way that you, you haven't learned yet. And you haven't gone through some of the challenges and things that they've gone through. So I love that perspective, man. And, and it's cool that you have the guitar as like your tangible, like reminder of, you know, put in the work, do the do the investment over a long period of time, and the results are going to come. And that's the beautiful thing too, is that the more of those like proof of concepts that you, you build as you build yourself, the more evidence you have of like, all right, well, I just know if I, if I like stick with this for long enough, I'm going to get somewhere that I thought was impossible at some point. Again, it might not look exactly how I would have initially planned, but like, I'm I'm going to be able to look back and see like whoa how did we get here because I've I've now seen the same thing again with like with the fitness side like I had this you know physical transformation over the last year was super overweight and then in a you know really relatively short period of time transformed my body and and it was the same thing where over this past year so much of it I felt like I was just like failing forward like it was like what am I doing you know it was the transfer, I, I tell people a lot like that transformation was fueled by like a lot of second guessing and like a lot of like subpar workouts, right? Like it wasn't yeah, all just home yeah. runs. Like there was a lot of just dragging myself to the gym and like questioning if it was, but then it's like, if you just, you keep your head down and you keep going, it, you get to that point where all of a sudden you, you pick your head up out of the water and you're like, whoa, like, how did we get here? How did this mm, happen? Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the fitness thing because that's another thing that I think is really, really inspiring about your story. And maybe if people don't know you, they they don't you know they hear you say that you've transformed your body and think, oh, that's cool, good for him. But like, it's been a major like you look like a different person than you did a year, <laughs> two years ago, right? Like, yeah. like if if somebody hadn't seen you in that amount of time and wasn't on social media, they they might they legit might not recognize you. Or they might be like, hey, you kind of resemble this guy that I know. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's drastic. It's great. Yeah. So like, what is your, what, I guess what, how, so do you have, do you have like stats you could share, like, you know, pounds lost or like, you know, sizes, like just so people can kind of tangibly understand, like when you say you've transformed, like put some numbers to that. 
Yeah, 60 pounds. So I was yeah. 230 pounds at my heaviest. I'm under, yeah, under 170. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. A, in the span of about nine months. That's uh, that's amazing. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Um, Thank and, you. And you did it all through just like you didn't you didn't like I'm assuming you didn't take a bunch of steroids and all that kind of you just you just went to the nah, gym and started nah, watching your diet like not well, yet. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I also want to give credit where credit is due. I I did. I hired a coach. Yeah. Um, I joined a coaching program that was absolutely transformative, which is one of the reasons why now I'm also like reinventing as well my myself and my offerings and and now I'm also coaching men mindset and fitness uh as well it's like a whole totally new thing for me but because I experienced the absolute like transformative power of that not just having the guidance of uh you know like here's this is what you do in the gym and like this is what you eat but having men speaking powerfully into my life as more of a mentor rather than just purely a personal trainer and really digging into that mindset and attaching this like massive deep purpose and meaning behind everything that I'm doing related yeah. to to my fitness was absolutely transformative. So yeah, I mean, no no gimmicks or anything, but I did I worked with a with a coach and then it was like, you know, w lifting weights in the gym 6 days a week and tracking my macros uh being really diligent on on tracking the food that I was eating. So it was very mm. deliberate and intentional and but I mean that's how you have massive change in a short period of time. What I love, yeah, and I love too how you've connected it to other things that you've seen whether it's playing guitar, building a business, like you've seen the formula work before where, you know, you make a plan, you stay diligent, and I love I love the fact that you brought up the coach and encouragement, accountability. Like I think that's a big part of anything that anybody wants. Like if you if you want to just, you know, take the prescribed path of, you know, go to college, get good grades, get a job, stay there until you retire. That's fine. Like, that's fine. You can stay in that lane and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you right. want to do something like a lot of people that are going to be listening to this are going to want to start their own thing or do, you know, some entrepreneurial type of endeavor, you're going to need perseverance, but you're also going to need accountability. You're going to need encouragement. Like, cause, cause it's hard, especially early on, man, like there's some lonely times. And it's like, there's a lot of work that if you didn't have, like for me personally, if I didn't have people in my corner, people like you and others that have like reached out and encouraged me, like there've been times where I've thought, man, I just shut this down. Like I just, I, I just, you know, I just posted this thing on Instagram and I got like three likes, like why, what am I doing? But it's just that encouragement of like, no, keep like the formula works and we've seen it proved out over and over again. I love that you can make those connections with things that you've actually walked through and done. So one of the things that you kind of weaved into your answer was you talked about mindset and like men encouraging and speaking life into your journey. Like talk about just kind of the importance of like mindset and how, how you think about that when it comes to all of this stuff. Yeah. A, a, a huge part is it it just comes down to discipline and exploring this whole past year was a journey of diving. It's, that seems like a throwaway thing, right? To say like, be disciplined, but there's so many layers to that. And so this past year, you know, with the help of, of these men speaking into my life, it was this like journey of really diving deep into what that means and what that looks like. And that is, that's really, it's just like the not so secret secret sauce of any successful endeavor is like, can you be disciplined to mm -hmm. show up and do the thing that you know you need to do? Because really like we're all looking for hacks and shortcuts and stuff, but for most things, we know what it is we really need to do, but we're guided by emotion on whether or not we do those things consistently enough. So we're guided by the the motivation. That's that's the killer that like I had to totally just change my language of how I spoke about certain things. Cause as soon as you start talking about like, well, I'm not feeling motivated to go to the gym, or I'm not feeling motivated to post on Instagram today, or I'm not feeling motivated to practice, then you're just automatically you're in a losing game. Yeah. Because people are then start chasing, okay, well, what's the, my solution to that? How do I get motivated? And that you, that's a moving target. It's unreliable. Instead, if you take all that energy and invest it in just building discipline, which is just purely the ability to show up and do the thing, whether you feel like it or not. Yeah. 
you know, that's, that's a game changer. And, and yeah, a big part of the mindset along with that is, uh, I kind of talked about this, like just attaching like deep meaning and purpose behind everything that you're doing. And so then if you can do that, you can also find a lot of just merit and reward in the process itself rather than being so results driven. So I can think, all right, as a father, if I'm going to the gym every morning, I might not have the results I want yet, right? Like maybe when I look in the mirror, I'm not proud of the body I see yet, right? Maybe I'm, you know, my, my kids aren't noticing my muscles yet, right? But what they are noticing is they see that dad drags himself out of bed every morning and he's yeah. already been to the gym and back before I wake up. What message does that send to my kids? That's right. Yeah. Right. Like things like that, that we really dig into and say, all right, like this routine, this mundane task that I have to do every day is bigger than the result that I'm working toward. Right. It's, it's teaching me something and teaching those around me something. That's a big part of it as well. Yeah, that's great. Hey listeners, so I'm doing it. I'm writing my book. It is uh, a lot of fun. It's way harder than I thought it would be. It is sometimes really painfully slow, but I'm doing it. I'm taking a story that has existed for a long time in my head and I'm putting it on pages. And I am so excited to continue this process, to continue editing. And I'm just really, really excited to bring this story to you eventually. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but I am so looking forward to that day when I can share it out with more people and hold a copy of the book, the bound finished book that I have written. Hey, listen, if you are a writer or know any writers, I want to hear those stories. So would you please, if you, again, if you know a writer or you are a writer, connect with me. I want to hear your story. I want to hear about what you're writing, why you're writing, how you got into writing, and what your process has looked like so far. Whether you're just at the beginning stages or you've already published one or more books, I want to hear your story. So send me an email. It's connect at tcburr.com. You can also go to my website. It's tcburr.com. You'll find a link there to contact me. Let's get in touch. I want to talk with you. I want to hear your story and I want to encourage other people with it. Thanks. Back to the show. And and you, I think you said earlier, like some of the workouts are not great ones. Like, you you know, some of the days you go and you're just like, you're getting it in and it's, you know, maybe it's not your best day, but, but you did it and you made, you took that step for that day and, and you're communicating to your kids and to those around you something deeper than just, you know, did you get, did you get a PR on bench that day or whatever? Like it's, it's more than that. So I love that. If you were talking to someone who is just getting started and you know you're you've got years and years of experience building a business um it sounds like you're branching out and, and doing more things with the fitness if you think about kind of all the all the mistakes that you've made over the years all the lessons that you've learned what is a piece of advice that you would give to somebody and maybe it's not connected to guitar or fitness at all but they're starting a business or they're starting out you know they want to launch a podcast or they do the something that you know they thought I could never do this, but you know, I've always wanted to do it. Like, how would you encourage that person or what, what advice would you give to somebody who's brand new, just getting going? I'll give two. I'll give one that's like just straight up practical. And then one that's more, again, like a mindset thing. Yeah. So for, for mindset, something that I've had to grapple with and force myself to like embrace is that if I choose to quit or if I choose just to, to not show up and not put out that piece of content, it's selfish. If I get obsessed with perfectionism, if I don't post something because I don't like the way that I, you know, I got a straight eyebrow hair or like <laughs> I don't like the way I stumbled over that word and I don't post it, it's selfish. It's, it's egocentric. It's inward looking. Is ultimately, we are creating content to provide value. What that value looks like, you know, is different depending on what you're doing, but it's, it's some form of value. You're serving people. So it's got to be outward focused. And so like any time, like remind yourself when you're feeling like, you know, like you said, you've had moments where you, you feel like throwing in the towel, 
I've had moments where I felt like throwing in the towel. We've all had those moments. It is selfish because you do have so much to give people. You have to find your people, but you have unique experience, unique knowledge, something that can absolutely change the trajectory of somebody's life. And if you choose not to share it, it is selfish. Mm. So kind of flipping the script like that is is a bit of a game changer. It's it's simple, but it, it forces you to to think more outwardly and realize like this isn't just me about like chasing some dream. Like this is my duty. This is my obligation. This is my responsibility. I have these gifts. I might question them at some point, right? I might kind of doubt myself in the moment. But I do. I have these gifts and these unique experiences that can absolutely change people's lives. And if I don't, if I don't show up, those people's lives will remain unchanged. Mm. And that's selfish. That's powerful, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. I've said, I tell people all the time, the world needs what you have to offer. But I think the way you just described it takes that even a step further. Like you're, if you don't share your gift with the world, you're, you're, you're being selfish and you're robbing people of that opportunity to, to be, to be encouraged and to maybe, maybe change your life. Like, I love that. That's awesome. And yeah, the, and practically one thing that I've learned is when you're talking to a camera, doing your little Instagram, you know, stories, uh, or you're even writing a post, right? If you're anything like me, your initial instinct is to write it through the lens of what the haters and the trolls and the people who doubt you are going to be thinking as they're reading it. And so then you're hedging your bets, you're, you're nitpicking your words because mm. you're, you're imagining the person on the other side of the camera just ready to be like, who do you think you are? Like, what are you doing? And you can really unpack like where that comes from, the self-loathing, all that, you know. But at the <laughs> yeah, end of the day, yeah. a far better exercise is to practice just imagining like your, your biggest fan on the other side of the camera, right? Um, so again, if you're literally talking to the camera or just writing a piece of content, whatever it is, like literally just imagine somebody that you're talking to that's just like eating up every word that you're saying, that's really engaged with you, that's tracking with you, that's it's your people, right? The people that are vibing with you, the ride or dies, allow yourself to really just like settle into that and the kind of the, the nitpicking, the perfectionism, the doubt, all that starts to kind of fade away. That's good advice, man. I, th I think a lot of us are, you know, that kind of have that perspective of like, oh, you know, I'm not going to say this perfectly or other people say it better than me. But like that, that thought of like, well, no, you're, man, your people are out there. Just talk to, talk to your people and they'll find you. That That's great. I'm curious. So you mentioned like the trolls and the haters. Do you have experience with that? Like, is that, is that a thing that's become real in your, cause you're, you're putting stuff out there online for lots. I mean, you get pretty good reach with some of your stuff. Do you deal with that at all with, with your world or are most people pretty encouraging? Well, definitely most people are encouraging. I mean, I will say that. And I think that's yeah. most people's experience, but it's like the loud, the, yeah. the hateful people are, are, are loud and they kind of, they, they get in there. And so it feels like more, I will say I'm experiencing it more now that I'm kind of reinventing myself okay. a little bit and branching off into the, like, uh, I think I said this probably before we started recording, but like, uh, now that I've been sharing workout stuff and mindset stuff on Instagram, I think that there have been some people that have come out of the woodworks that want me to just like shut up and play guitar. <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is to be expected. Like they followed sure. me for a certain reason. I don't hold yeah. it against them. But yeah, so I have, and I've been fairly aggressive too in some of my, my language in terms of how I'm speaking to people related to this because mm. that's what I needed. And what I mean by that is like, just like really calling people out on, on where they're lacking and where they could be showing up in so much more of a powerful way, like living up to their potential. Because I had enough people in my life telling me I was doing my best, telling me I'm, you're, do, you're fine, like you don't need to do this, you're good. And that was just keeping me stuck. And I needed those men who were like, no, 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 no. You haven't even scratched the surface of what you're capable of. Like man up, show up, do the work, right? And so anyway, so, but that also like some people want a little bit more grace. And so like I did a post the other day that I was talking about, like, 
Tyler said, like, when did it become so normal for men to be so weak? Mm. And I talked, I broke it down in the caption again, saying like, you know, I was talking to myself as well. Like, and this is, uh, I was doing like, so I, the post, I was like doing some pull-ups and like, I had this like 12 year old girl, like comment and roast me on my like push pull-up form. She's like, nice. he's calling men out for being weak and he's doing like half pull-ups or something like that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so some hate on, on, on that front. But as far as the guitar scene, yeah, definitely like some hate, but my my thoughts for that is like you you always have to consider the source um because somebody who like first of all if if you say something that really strikes a nerve for somebody like it's probably like what they needed to hear like it's probably strikes a nerve yeah. because it's true yeah. for them whether they're ready to hear that right now or not but usually like somebody like if if somebody posts a piece posts a piece of content that I don't like or that I don't agree with unless I feel like some moral obligation to speak out against it or something like I'm just going to move on, That's move right. on with my yeah. day. Right. And so it takes, it's unfortunately, it's usually a very sad, broken person who feels the need to lash out. And so like, you got to kind of keep that perspective. And then there's also the weird, like social media side, as far as like, do you engage with them or not? Oh, right. Right. I, yeah. I, I had a philosophy for a long time that you, that I don't, because especially once you're, you see this a lot where people get a certain, you know, once they, their audience reaches a certain size, they can't respond to every comment. And so you see this where they don't respond to all the nice stuff. They only respond to the hate. And that always, oh, yeah. that always annoyed me. Cause I was like, that's not yeah. fair to all your, all your people who are loving on you. So that's what I would do. I was like, I would ignore the haters and uh, let them just scream into the void. But like for the algorithm and all that stuff, you want engagement. And man, <laughs> nothing gets engagement more than like letting more people see that hate comment and like starting this little debate. So anyway, but that's, mm, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> algorithm. Ugh, I was hoping you wouldn't say that the word. Algorithm. It's been my nemesis on <laughs> social media. But like a lot of us, um, are there any, um, any, like, I know, I know we talked about, there's not, there's no shortcuts and there's really not like, you know, a ton of hacks or things, but like, are there any resources that you would point people to in terms of, you know, like books or podcasts or things that people can consume or use to help, help them, you know, think about again, the person who's just starting out maybe in business, like, what are some of the some of the things that you might point people to as they're just getting started? So, as far as a, a great resource for building an online business, you know, if we're going to talk there, just super practical. Yeah. I mentioned the guy who really like inspired me to to first get going with this Graham Cochran. He has a podcast and a YouTube channel where it just gives out a ton of just free, uh, invaluable content about building a brand, a business online. So I've I've learned so much. I've modeled a lot of my business as far as I also like I sell online courses and programs. It's a big part of my business. And the entire back end of how I structured that is modeled after a course of his that I bought, which okay. again, like, I mean, you don't even have to like so much of his content is just available for free through his YouTube and, and podcast. But yeah, as far as real practical stuff, can't recommend Graham Cochran enough. And then I, I got to throw in like, as far as like mindset stuff, a book, one of the most impactful books that I read over the last year was how to think like a Roman emperor by okay. Donald Robertson. So it gets, this is, it's like stoic philosophy, which I was never, never really been introduced to, but it was actually recommended by my coaches and read it. And it's so just like, you could apply, like I could take a lot of that. Of course it was it's the stoic philosophy. A lot of it is like the, the wording is like a nature and virtue, but like you can replace a lot of that with God. And, and a lot of it, like, you know, for like my Christian faith, like it, it can fall in line with just beautifully so much of that. Um, but there's a lot of just real practical tips and techniques to build your mind, which again, like you need to have that resilient mind when you're building this, this business one of the big takeaways from that book was it talked about how it is rarely the thing itself that causes us the most stress, pain, anxiety, but it's our perception of that thing. Mm. And so when you unpack that, that came down to like a big struggle before I started to really like change my mindset for me was anytime I posted a YouTube video that tanked, 
Um, and anybody can relate to this. You, you know, you mentioned you, you put a Instagram post out there that just, you know, gets a few likes. But for me too, especially when I was established, right? And I would have a bunch of videos that would do really well. And then you post and you have like maybe three or four in a row that just like mm, do nothing. Yeah. I would spiral. I, I would see that. Look at all those like vanity metrics, you know, just the views and all that stuff and like be like, oh, well, here we go. The algorithm, right, has changed and like my my career is over. I'm not going to be able to put food on the table. I'm going to have to go back to a job I hate. And again, you you just you spiral and you get in this just really dark headspace. Um, and so just that real simple statement helped me realize like, OK, like in those moments, I need to remember to take these things at just very objective face value. The thing that was, you know, that, that happened was this video didn't get a lot of views. Okay. At face value. Yeah. I mean, that kind of sucks. It's not great, but yeah. that in and of itself was not what was causing me all that stress and pain. It was all the catastrophizing outside of that. So anyway, lots of stuff like that in that book that is just really been super helpful for me. Yeah. Well, I'll link to it in the notes and I, I, I want to read it. it. Sounds amazing. This is great, man. This has been really encouraging. I've had a lot of fun hearing your story and, and I think people are going to get a ton out of this. Before I let you go, just if you could just kind of promote yourself and your stuff, how do people get in touch with you? If they want to learn guitar, check out some of your courses or maybe connect with you on the fitness stuff, how, what's the best way to do it? Yeah. So all of it is beyond the guitar. So um, if you just want to hear me play guitar, stay on YouTube for now. If you're into some of this other stuff, come over to Instagram at Beyond the Guitar. It's all under Beyond the Guitar. Awesome. Well, and if people want to listen to your guitar, I'm actually you actually did a custom uh, outro that I'm going to play here after after we get done here. So stick around for the next uh, 30 seconds or so, folks, if you want to hear a little preview. Nathan, this has been great, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, dude, it's great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you would do me a huge favor, if you got value out of this podcast, which I'm assuming maybe you did since you're still here, would you scroll down to the bottom of your podcast app and rate and review the show? And maybe share it with someone on social media or with a friend just in a conversation. Uh, it would mean so much to get this message out to more people. And I think it would be amazing if you would share it. So that would be a, as a personal favor to me. I'd really love it. Also, if you want to know more about me and what I'm working on, you can visit my website. It's tcburr.com. I hope you'll check it out. You can contact me there. Thanks again. And I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon.